If you want to become a camera tracking pro, then this video is exactly right for you. First, open the motion tracking workspace and load in your footage. Important! Your footage should be an image sequence because else there will be consequences. Then click set scene frames to make the project match the clip's start and end frames and press prefetch to pre-cache the clip. This will make playback faster and smoother. Now let's check out these settings here. The pattern size is the size of the feature that you want to track and the search size is the area that Blender will search for the pattern in. So if you have really fast moving footage then you'll want to increase the search size a bit. But these settings can always be tweaked later so I'll just leave them at the default settings for now. The next thing is the motion model. It's pretty important so you'll have to choose the right one for each situation. The location Location, location at scale and location at rotation models are pretty self-explanatory, but the ones you will probably use the most are the affine and perspective models. The perspective model is going to be able to track perspective shifts and the affine model can handle stretchy stuff, but it can also be used for perspective shifts. By the way, the one I use most is the affine model because it works in most situations. Now, you see this match drop down here? This is going to determine if Blender will search for the feature based on how it looked on the last frame or based on how it looked on the last keyframe. Furthermore, I recommend you to check this normalized check books because it will make it so that if the brightness of the pattern changes, Blender will still be able to find the pattern. With the settings sorted out, we're ready to start tracking. When choosing what to use as a pattern, you'll always want to use high contrast areas like this window here. If your footage has a lot of motion blur, then you'll want to use features that are as big as possible because they stay way more visible than small features when the footage gets blurry. Now, to track them, you can either press Ctrl T to track them forward or you could press Alt and the right arrow button to just track one frame forward. If you want to track backwards you can press ctrl shift t or alt and left arrow. If the tracking stops and you don't know why, try pressing alt s and check if the search area is still big enough. If not, just increase the size and continue tracking. If it still doesn't want to track further, you can either give up on the track or manually keyframe it onto the feature in the frame where it stopped. Then once you have the tracker repositioned, you can just continue tracking it. To reduce the solve error later down the line, watch the track closely if it's still tracking the right thing or if it's still tracking accurately enough. Because if it's not, it's just better to stop the track at the point where it gets inaccurate. Then once you have eight active trackers on each frame, go to solve and hit solve camera motion. If your solve error is high, you could check keyframe and let Blender choose the keyframes, but I don't recommend that because it makes bad choices sometimes. What I recommend instead is to manually change the keyframe A and B. The frame range you choose has to have at least eight tracks that stay through the entire frame range. Now just experiment until you have the lowest nice. possible solve, then check the focal length, radial distortion and optical center checkboxes and solve again. If the solve error is still high, we can bring it down by finding the tracks that have a high solve error and then fixing them. To do that, check info in this drop down here and select all the tracks. Now you can see the solve errors of each track. And what you'll want to do is to select the ones that have the highest solve error, lock onto it by pressing L and then watching it throughout the entire clip. And if the solve error is high, then you'll most likely see a point where something goes wrong with the track. When that happens, you can either try to fix it by keyframe it onto the correct position again and tracking from there. Or you could just delete all the inaccurate track data by using these buttons here. Another option is to just reduce the weight of the track and that'll reduce the influence that the track has on the final result. Now if you feel the track becomes inaccurate for no reason, then you could try a few things to improve the track. The first thing is to limit the color channels like this, which will in some cases bring out more contrast. Or you could also try out different motion models. The last option is to just delete the track. It's better to have less tracks that are more accurate than more tracks that are less accurate. I think it's a good idea to resolve after each fixed track, figure out if it actually got better. But now you know how to fix the bad track, so resolve again and set up the tracking scene by going to solve, down to scene setup and pressing setup tracking scene. Then select a track, ideally on the floor, and hit set origin. This will put the selected track at the origin of the scene. After that, you'll want to select three tracks either on a wall or the floor and hit the floor and wall buttons respectively. After that, you'll want to set the scale of the scene. So select two tracks that you know the distance of, type the distance into this text field here and hit set scale. Last thing is to select another track in relation to the origin and hitting either set x or y axis to align the camera with the x or y axis. And now you should have a perfectly tracked camera and a tracking scene that you can just start working on. If this video helped at all, please watch this video next and subscribe.